What are we supposed to do when we see all this spiritual warfare, all this calamity? How can we stand against these gates of hell? Well, let's look. After he tells us about this, he describes how Timothy should be. We go to verse six. He says, in pointing out these things to the brethren, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus. Now he's going to describe him constantly nourished on the words of faith and of the sound doctrine which you have been following. Now, let's just stop here right now. Would you describe your life? As constantly nourished on the words of the faith. Is that how you would describe your life? Now, I'm not just talking to the preacher, the pastor, the evangelist, the person in the ministry. I'm not just talking about the head of the household. I'm talking about everyone who identifies themselves with the person of Christ and his salvation. Would you identify yourself, describe yourself as someone who was literally nourished, constantly nourished on the words of the faith? Would you say that? Most would have to say no. Paul is telling Timothy, Timothy, there is going to be an onslaught of warfare. This is a difficult thing. The Christian life is a difficult uphill battle fighting all the way. Timothy, here's the first thing you've got to put in mind. You must be constantly nourished by the words of the faith. I read a statistic years ago that said the average minister in America spends less than 15 minutes a day in the Word of God. Now, what does that mean for the rest of the congregation? Some of you will have to admit you haven't been in the Word of God in a long time. Some of you may have to admit that the only time you're ever in the Word of God is Sunday and Wednesday. And yet, in order to live this Christian life, we must be people who are constantly nourished in the words of faith, the words of the faith. Now, I want you to think about something for a moment. Let's say that that all of us decide that we have a lot to do in the month of May. So it's the last days of April and we decide that we just have a lot to do and we don't have time to eat. We simply don't have time to eat all the month of May. So this is what we're going to do. The first and second and third day of May. We're going to eat 24 hours a day for three days. That's all we're going to do. We're just going to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. So that we do not have to eat the rest of the month. So that we can give ourselves to the labors and the tasks that we must accomplish now. You don't have to be a doctor or a scientist to know something that is not going to work. Even if you eat three days in a row, 24 hours a day, by about, I don't know, nine o'clock the fourth day, you're going to be hungry again. Why? Because that's not the way it works. You don't eat for three days so that you don't have to eat the rest of the month. You don't drink a whole bunch of water like a camel for three days so that you don't have to drink water the rest of the month. You realize that you must eat every day and not just once a day, periodically through the day. And you must drink water every day, not just once a day, but periodically through the entire day. You must be constantly nourishing yourself or you will not be healthy. You will not grow. Constantly nourishing yourself. Do you do that? Do you do that? We have a world filled of ministers who, as the Japanese man who came over to this country once said, when I look at a Buddhist priest in my own country, and I see his life of meditation and the study of his holy books and how he contemplates and how he strives and disciplines his life for spirituality. I think, holy man, 
When I come to the United States and see an evangelical pastor, I think businessman, administrator. You see, what we have done, starting with the minister, is we have turned in our mantle of the prophet and put on a business jacket. And so many churches today are run by administrators, movers and shakers and planners and strategists and little boys with laptop computers. But not men who constantly nourish themselves in the Word of God and constantly dwell in the presence of God in prayer. And that filters down through the entire congregation. The Word of God is the only thing we have. You cannot lead your family, sir. You cannot do it apart from being constantly nourished on the words of the faith. You cannot. You cannot be godly. You cannot be an instrument of God. You cannot grow. It is an absolute essential. But it is the very thing that we do not do. Or... We recognize that we do not do it. And so we get all psyched up about what we're going to do. And we end up saying, well, today I'm going to study 37 chapters. Today I'm going to pray four hours. You totally wear yourself out and then don't do it again for several weeks. You're anemic and weak and do not understand the ways of God. And in some ways, there's not a, there's not a healthy part of you from your head to your toe. So many Christians struggle and suffer in so many areas of their life because of ignorance of God's word, direct disobedience to God's will. And it seems as though they're not even aware of it. The word of God is all we have. It's all we have. And how can we stand in such a defiled culture? How can we stand with so many wrong ideas and wrong thoughts bombarding us all the time? It is only by constantly nourishing ourselves, being nourished in the Word of God and the sound doctrine which we have been following. My dear friend, I could stop right now and simply ask you, what kind of relationship do you have with the Word of God? What kind of relationship? Last week I was at a conference preaching and I had many, many interviews with several young men. And they all came in, many of them brand new converts, some of them converts two years, three years, and every one of them, bless their heart, they want to change the world. They've got they have got ideas of ministry and they want to do this and they want to do that and they want to do so many things. And I look at them and I just say, stop. You don't even know God. You're saved. Yes, but you're a novice. First Timothy, chapter three. And not a new convert. You don't know the word. How long do you tarry every day in the Scripture? Is it a half an hour? Is it an hour? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? How many hours a day do you tarry in prayer? Do you really know Him? Have you been schooled in His presence? Everyone wants to jump into the ministry because everyone wants to do something. The problem is it's not about doing something. It's about being something. Conform to the image of Christ and someone who lives in the presence of God. Like I said, we've traded in the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit for ten steps to have your best life now. We are a spiritual people. We live based on truth. And if our lives are not governed by that truth, we cannot stand. And if you are not a man or a woman or a young believer who has recognized the importance of literally being saturated in the Word of God, reading this thing from Genesis to Revelation, pondering it, meditating on it, memorizing it, you cannot stand. You cannot.